loyal and faithful acolytes of the Holy Inquisition, please gather close and shield yourselves from the content of the following sermon. Today, we shall delve into the forbidden annals of Terra's most well-guarded librariums to learn of one of the most foul and warp-tainted tales which we have thus far encountered from the followers of Chaos. This is to be the reviled story of the Demoncolaba, a blasphemous abomination which only the most heinous of chaotic adherents could have assembled. And this stood as an affront to not only humanity, but also against the sanctity of life itself. In order for us to best combat the foul followers of the warp, we must learn of the extent to which they will go to perversely taint and corrupt all that we as Imperial agents stand for. There is to be no salvation or redemption for those who were involved in the creation of this unholy atrocity. Please embolden your souls with faith and fury. This malevolent creation should fill you with nothing but a feeling of overwhelming dread. However, the purpose of learning this is to truly ignite a spark of hatred towards the followers of chaos, and I can only hope that it will solidify your understanding in that all traces of chaos should be swiftly and remorselessly exterminated wherever it is found. The Demonculaba was a project first promoted and implemented by the treacherous members of the Fifth Traitor Legion, the Iron Warriors. It manifested itself within the foul mind of a warsmith known to all as Honsu, who was himself seen as a distrustworthy member of their legion, since his gene seed was impure, as it was partially sourced from their arch-rival legion, the Imperial Fists, as well as from their own hardy Iron Warriors stock. Despite this, he grew to a level of great prominence within the Traitor Legion, where he became a warsmith, which was an honorary rank, somewhat equivalent to a captain, which remained within the Legion as a vestige from their old days, as loyalist marines. This project gained form upon the demon world of Medrengard, within the dark dungeons of his personal fortress of Kalangol. As with any construction of the Iron Warriors, the Demonculaba stood as a disgustingly hellish fusion of their skills in metallurgy and forging, all emboldened by the tainted touch of demonic powers. The ultimate purpose of this project was to provide the Traitor Legion with a method for birthing and creating new Chaos Space Marines, allowing them to swell their ranks with new recruits to the Long War. For the Traitor Forces, the process of rebuilding their ranks was usually a rather difficult endeavor. They could attempt to use their own gene seed stocks on fallen marines, and sometimes they would swell their forces with new renegade turncoats. However, this was a rather slow and arduous mission, which could not compete with the Imperium's methods of recruiting new initiates into their chapters. The hypothesized method was to somehow grow new, fully formed marines from a part biological, part mechanical, and entirely demonic machine. This would allow them to bypass the previously discussed tactics, and they could then produce an endless supply of new Chaos marines to join them in their mission of galactic destruction. Now please be warned, for the methods I am to describe are most heinous and disturbing, so fortify your minds against that which you are about to hear. In practice, the Iron Warriors would capture humans as slaves from their missions of plunderous destruction before bringing them back to Kalangol for their unholy transformation. These slaves were physically shackled and fused to the dungeon walls, before being force-fed a constant glut of noxious nutrients, done to force their bodies into growing to disgusting, distorted proportions. These slaves were then surgically and demonically altered by heretic priests, known as savage morticians, to change their internal anatomy into a form which could contain and sustain an aspiring chaos marine. 
Their stomachs were brutally enlarged to allow for a marine to grow within them, and many of their organs were simply removed and discarded if they could not serve their new purpose as living incubators. Now the Iron Warriors had previously raided many worlds of the Imperium to build up a vast stock of Imperial Fist's gene seed, which was also implanted within these slaves. This holy genetic material would provide the young initiate with the means to produce the various organs of a space marine, all tainted by the foul touch of chaos. Even with our current knowledge of the foul, chaotic energies used during this process, we still do not fully understand the exact method, but we can only presume that some esoteric, warp-tainted energies vastly aided in their transformation. Once the transformed human was ready, a young slave would be plucked from captivity, and they would be surgically implanted within the new womb of these previously described hosts. In mere solar days, the bound human would undergo an immense process of maturation and heretical development, where they would produce the new organs of a space marine, and their frames would grow into the typical size of a standard Astartes. Some of the nutrients fed to the foul, embryonic human were sourced from fallen space marines themselves, which would help to further accelerate their disgusting maturation process. Soon after, they would be reborn, where they would be rejected from the womb, spewing out onto the disgusting broken dungeon floor in a wave of coagulated blood and demonic ichor. Perhaps by foul design, they were born with no skin and so would flap and writhe in agony, provided that they even survived the terrible process. Upon birth, the savage morticians would inspect the half-formed marine for abnormalities, and if he proved to be physically worthy, then they would sew a new canvas of skin upon their tainted bodies, and he would be able to stand as a new member of the Chaos Space Marines. This skin was sourced from other slaves of the world, which had been forcibly flayed from their living bodies and stretched to fit the enlarged proportions of a marine. Now this was only to be the result of the successful transformations. For those who were utterly disfigured, with their bodies too broken or their minds displaying nothing but warp-inflicted madness, they were to be flushed into the dungeon sewers where they would end up in the barren wastes of Medengard, left to die as failures. These rejects would sometimes survive the process, however, and would form small bands of mutated creatures known to the Iron Warriors as the Unfleshed. Once born, a new slave would quickly be sourced and implanted within the open womb, restarting the horrific cycle until the host eventually perished. Upon death, their flesh would simply be boiled down, distilled, and refed to other members of the Demonculaba, ensuring that the vile biological machine would run evermore. Due to the sheer vastness of this terror, the entire process created a huge disturbance within the already tumultuous screeching of the warp, and it did not last long until this was detected by the most esteemed chief librarian of the Ultramarines, Varro Tigurius. He experienced haunting visions of the abominable birthing factory, and upon relaying this information to the chapter master Marnaeus Calgar, it led to the formation of a plan. Calgar decreed that the recently dishonored marines known as Uriel Ventris and Persanius Lysane should take an oath of death and seek out the Demonculaba where they would locate and destroy whatever foul entities they found. During their mission, they encountered a demon prince of corn who had become unwillingly bound to the iron warriors within an infernal demon engine. 
Whilst this foul entity instinctually sought the deaths of the Marines, he also displayed an uncharacteristic sense of cunning. And so, the demon sought to use the Ultramarines as pawns in his mission of gaining revenge against his traitor Astartes Masters. The demon was imprisoned within an engine of war, and it captured the two Marines before bringing them directly to Medengard, where they were ejected upon its surface. Here, they made contact and banded together with several enslaved Imperial Guardsmen, renegade space Marines and members of the Unfleshed. The mismatched group then engaged in several hit-and-run style attacks upon the Iron Warriors' forces before finally locating the source of the Demonculaba. Whilst they were successful at breaking into the fortress dungeons, they could not have anticipated the sheer level of horror which was to be found within. Seeing the wretched birthing chambers ensnared Ventress in a moment of shock, at which point he was captured by the defending Iron Warriors and forced into one of the terrible wombs himself. Whilst implanted here, he felt the vile abomination as it began to sap his very gene seed from his body, but in a moment of righteous fury, he was able to rip himself out of the biological prison in a burst of gore. Newly freed, Ventris, along with his companions, proceeded to utterly destroy the fetid biological factory, ensuring that the Iron Warriors could never produce new recruits in this most disgusting fashion ever again. After an arduous journey through the stars, rife with inquisitive forces who were compelled to question a pair of Marines who had just appeared from the warp, they were finally allowed to return home. With their oath of death completed, the Marines made it back to Ultramar, but rather than being greeted as heroes, they were forced to endure a grueling interrogation process led by Varro Tigurius. This was just to ensure that no traces of chaotic taint were to be found, but they were each seen to be pure of body and soul. And so, Ventress was reinstated as captain of the Ultramarine's fourth company, a position which he still holds to this day. With the destruction of the Demonculaba, the efforts of the Iron Warriors and the forces of Chaos proved to be their own downfall. Let none assume that consorting with the energies of the warp is to be a fruitful endeavor, for any action performed with ephemeral powers shall surely gain the attention of those loyal to the Imperium. This harrowing tale is to be a cautionary one, Seeing the boundless malevolence of chaos may inspire some to think that they may harness and utilize it for beneficial endeavors. However, by consorting with the dark gods, one only invites their own death at the hand of the Emperor's angels. We stand here as resolute followers of the Imperium and as adherents to the Holy Inquisition, and we should find hope in the knowledge that we may destroy even that which is most vile and terrible. We are to be the champions of the Emperor's holy light, bringing his shining glory to even the darkest of places within the galaxy. Please remember that by his word we may vanquish any impure and abhorrent followers of chaos, and that we will go to any lengths to ensure that they do not succeed in achieving their most foul goals.